the Sabbath was, was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and, and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. So here, here you have the ladies. They're going to anoint Jesus' body, a dead body. He'd been buried. The women was there with him when he died on the cross. They watched him take him down. They watched him, they watched him wrap him in linen, and they watched him put him in the tomb. Mm -hmm. They were there, those women were there every step of the way. When they were going to this tomb, they wasn't expecting a risen Savior. Even though he had proclaimed it earlier, they were going there to anoint the body. Yep. They were going there expecting to see a dead Savior, a dead Jesus. Yep. Even though he said it had not registered in their mind, it wasn't instilled in their heart, their whole intentions was to anoint that body. They woke up very early that morning. They'd spent years, three years, you know, Mary Magdalene spent years traveling with Jesus, listening to him speak, listening to the lessons, the miracles that he performed. And when he died, there was no hope. They, they lost their hope. And when the Jews buried their dead, they, they buried their dead immediately. They didn't embalm. They didn't believe in that. They didn't believe in cremating. They would take linen and they would have it in strips. And they'd wrap each arm. They'd wrap each leg. Then they'd take the cloth and they'd wrap the body. And sometimes they even put a shroud over their head. The only thing that you'd see would be their face. And then they would have the linen napkin that would cover their face up. And in between these layers of linen, they would anoint, they put spices in oil, and, and myrrh, uh, and alloys. Reason being, to kill the smell. Because they didn't embalm. So they put all these aloes and, and anointing in the, in the folds of these cloths. Then at the end, they'd have an oil, and they would pour, just pour it all over on the body. And it would give a sweet smell. And to keep it as long as possible. Jesus, when, when he was before his uh, crucifixion, crucifixion, that when she was at the feet of Jesus, he said, you know, and she put the oil on his feet, and there was, you know, and the other one getting ready to cook dinner. He said, leave her alone. You know, she's in. He was saying, she's in my body now. And they, they weren't putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And so here you have Jesus. He's in the tomb. And <coughs> these women woke up very early because they probably didn't sleep that good. If anybody's lost anybody in their life, you know the first two or three days, yeah. you don't sleep good. Your heart's, your, your heart's broken. There's a void in your heart that you can't replace, whether it be a mother, a father, a sibling, or a friend. You can never put, put that back. Then you talk, then you think about it. The things that you might have wanted to say to that person, or the things that you should have done for that person, or did I do enough for that person? All these things is going through their head that night, you know, the, since his crucifixion. So they woke up early. 
It says, And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And if you're if y'all are like me, sometimes I get headstrong. Jody gets on to me like I'll go and start something. Don't think about the whole project. Uh -huh. and, and there's something at the end, like you get a quarter in or halfway in and don't realize how am I going to do this? I should have thought this through. Uh -huh. Here they are. They were they woke up, sad, heart stricken, going to the tomb before it even broke daylight. And then they're on their way, and, and then they realize, whoa, yeah. how are we going to get that stone rolled away? Mm -hmm. The other gospels have recorded that there was even guards put up because the Pharisees, the ones that was Jesus' enemy, brought back his, the words to their minds saying, he said he would rise on the third day. So they said, put, make it secure. So the stone was rolled in. There was soldiers standing guard. So here they are, they're on their way. And then they realize, how are we going to get that door open? They could have turned around and said, we, we, can't, get, we can't get in. There ain't no way. But they didn't. They went on. Because they had, a, they had faith. Even though they had lost some hope, they still had that faith that we're going to do what we're supposed to. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. In the other Gospels, it, said that the, it tells us that there was an earthquake, and that stone was rolled away. And that the guards got so afraid that it said that they, was, as they, said, they were dead. I don't know if they passed out no. and laid there or what, but they said they'd be as if they were dead. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. I can imagine how frightened they could have been. Because what are you doing? They're expecting a dead body. Right. And here they see a man sitting there in a white garment inside that tomb. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Be not frightened, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. So he's telling you, look. So here's the Lord Jesus. He's, he's, he's been wrapped with these arms and, and, and the linens almost like a mummy. That in itself, trying to get out of that would have been a miracle. But he rose. They said, look at these garments. He was here, but he is risen. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter mm -hmm. that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. And he said unto you, uh, said, and he said unto you, and they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. When you read verses 7 and 8, this is, but go your way, tell his disciple and Peter. And you think, wow. Yeah. Why would the Bible quote and Peter? If we read back into the lesson or to the chapter, Peter had denied Jesus three times. Peter was sort of like the, the leader of the group. Peter was the, the one that was bold and and was vocal and and stood up for Jesus. He's the one that said, I'll never leave you. I'll be by your side. But, he did, but Jesus told him that you'll deny me three times, Peter. Right. Peter said, there ain't no way. No way. 
but I did not deny you, God, Lord, three times. But he did. Yeah. Why? Because he's afraid. Yeah. He saw when they was taking Jesus to be tortured and stuff, he, he saw what they were doing to him and how they were treating him. That same fear instilled in, in him. Uh -huh. <clears throat> if they do that to my Lord, what would they do to me? I'm the high, I'm, I'm low. He's the leader. I'm just a second man. What would he do to me? They start questioning, asking, you're him. No, not me. The third time he even cursed, acted like one of them. Nah. Nah. I'm not him. But when he, Jesus' eyes made eye contact with Peter, Peter's heart broke. Yeah, I did. What did Peter do? He lost hope. He lost the same hope that Judas done. <clears throat> Judas, in the Bible, says he repented. Not that he repented like as we repent, but it, he said that he was sorry. He went back and took and th told the high priest, "Here's your thirty pieces of silver." He said, "Here's your thirty pieces. I don't want it." They said, no, we don't. that's blood money to them. Uh, don't want it. So they bought land for a cemetery for people who didn't have one. That same cemetery is where Judas ended up being. Because Judas, Judas hung himself. So you had two people that followed Jesus who lost hope. Yeah. One killed himself. One was sorry. When a man loses his hope, he's most sorrowful. Mm -hmm. That's when somebody, that's why we have suicide. Why? Because they have lost all hope. That they feel that there's no way out, that neither they have nobody that loves them, nobody cares, there is no hope. But I'm here to tell you there's hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. And we see it. This scripture could have easily read. Go your way, tell his disciples and Peter and Judas yeah. to meet me. Because I want to talk to them. Peter might have been, Peter in the, in the other scriptures had said he was, he was going back home. Yeah. He was going back to Galilee. He's going to go back to fishing. Yeah. I'm done. But the Bible says, the, the angel said, go, go get, go get the, the leaven, because the Judas was gone, and Peter. Sometimes in our life, we feel like we have no hope. Yeah. Sometimes as a Christians, we do something in our Christian life, and we feel so sorry. We, we feel like we, we, we don't measure up. We feel like we've lost everything just like Peter did. Peter was, he was side by side with Jesus. He rested his head on Jesus' bosom. But he lost hope. Yeah. He felt like he was no good. The Bible tells us that when he arose that he met with Peter by himself. The Bible does not say what the conversation was. But I guarantee you, it was Jesus telling him that he loved him, yeah. that it's all right. Yeah. You've got condemnation, you've got compassion. When it's over, you've got joy and restoration. Yeah. Jesus. Restored Peter. Because when, when he talked to him last, he said, he asked Peter, do you love me? <laughs> do you love me? Yeah, that's a three times. Three times. He said, what? Be my sheep. Yeah. For the three times that you denied me, I'm asking you three ten more times, do you love me? Uh -huh. He was welcoming back. He's wanting that reconciliation. 
He's wanting to restore his hope that he would have in Jesus Christ. He said, if you love me, be my sheep. And as Christians, when we fail, ask yourself, I'm sure he would ask yourself, do you love him? Go feed sheep. Don't lose so much hope that you want to go back home or go back to your old place because death will surely fall. You'll be, it's not the, it's not the course. But if you love him, you go feed his sheep. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed, neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that he had been with him, and they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had seen of her, believed not. And after that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. So the, Mary went and told the other disciples, he's risen. Yeah. He's risen. And they believed him not, believed him. Here they are, they didn't believe, they was hid in an upper room. And they themselves were sitting there like whipped pups, acting like no hope. As you sit there as a group of men and you have these the women, then you think, why would they not believe? And then, you know, <laughs> got your attention now, didn't I? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Why would they not believe on the one? And one one reason is they, they didn't believe is that a test in Jewish days, a testimony of a woman was unvalid. Yeah. You didn't believe. If a man said it, you believed it. Woman said it, mm, we, we maybe not, you know? <laughs> and that's you know, so they didn't believe. Then he was found another place when he had two apostles or disciples that was walking, and that was Ananias. And Jesus appeared to himself, you know. They didn't recognize him at first. And they're sitting there talking to Jesus, you know, and he said, Where are you going? What are you doing? They're just traveling. They're, they're, they're sad. And here they are, they're talking to Jesus and didn't know. So you, you had the body of the people that followed him so close, didn't believe, but you had the enemy, the high priest, that were said, wait a minute, their day is coming. He could come. They were trying to prevent it. They even went as far as when the soldiers went back to the people that hired them to guard, paid them money to say, hey, when anybody asked, they came and stole the body. And to this day, they still find They stole the body. So they was they was trying to cover it up. <coughs> then you know you had <coughs> stories like how, like what 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 could have happened. Uh, 
They didn't believe. The people was in the upper room hiding. You know, they had Roman soldiers guarding the tomb. The men that followed Jesus, and you think about it, everybody wants proof today. If you talk like, them, how do you know it? Prove it to me. Nobody wants to go for it. Nobody will believe your word. They said, because now, you know, you tell them, you know, read the Bible, they'll, they'll, they'll try to disclaim the Bible that it contradicts itself, and they, won't, they don't want to believe it. But one thing that you can believe is when 11 men could see something and see the resurrected body, and then later on, those 11 men died gruesome deaths, you would think at some point in their ministry, when, they, when it was time for them to die, say, hey, 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 we, he did that. We don't know if he was alive or not. They wouldn't follow it. A, a man does not go that far to die that gruesome and not believe. And they said, you know, people said, well, that, that, that's just 11. Jesus was seen by 500. And what happened to them? They all went. The gospel st started spreading like wildfire. Why? Because that the people said, I seen from my own eyes this man called Jesus was alive. He died on the cross, but somehow or another, in three days, I seen him. That's hope. That's the hope that we based all of our religion on. Without that death and burial and resurrection, we have no hope. We are a sin-sick people and we ne can never be saved. But Jesus said no. He fulfilled that promise because he loved us. He loves you. He loves me. For the Christian who Maybe getting backslide, or even right now, like say, you feel like you don't have victory because you might have not lived up to what you want to be. He's asking you, do you love me? Go be my sheep. To the ones who's a sinner, saying, I'm not worthy. Look at these disciples. They failed him in the most crucial time. They weren't worthy neither. But what did he tell them? If you love me, go feed my sheep. Today, he's asking you, do you love me? Yeah. He said, I love you, but if you don't know me, I'm knocking on your door. If you're feeling something like I need to, I'm not where I need to be, he's, he's asking you that same question. Do you love me? Yeah. Come. And then go feed my sheep. Small decision, but a hefty decision. Yep. When God extends that invitation to you, when your heart's pricked, it's the most, it's the most important decision you'll ever make in your whole life. It, it, it's a decision that trumps everything in your life. What job you want to go to? No. What college you want to go to? No, that ain't it. What woman you married? No, that ain't it. Where am I put my finances? No, that's not it. Because all this is going to be gone. One day, you will stand alone in the sight of God. Yeah. And you will be bowed. But there won't be that love me, feed my sheep. You'll be judged. We'll all be judged. He'll look at you and say, I loved you. But did you accept it? A lot of good people want to go to hell. But because of this resurrection, he loved us that much to take on that pain, that tribulation, and that hardship so that he could give you the opportunity to say, I accept you or I deny you. That's how much he loves you. He gives you the choice. 
He's risen. Thank God he's risen. Because that, we wouldn't be here. This church, if he didn't rise, we would not be here. Be nothing. All the religions in the world, you got, you got uh, like four that bases it on a person. You got Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, and Christianity. All are dead. Whoever they, whoever wrote their book, their Quran, or whoever they followed, they're all gone, except for Jesus Christ. He's alive. There's a story about you know a guy who went from Islam to uh, Christianity, and they asked him and started saying, "Why? Why did you? Why did you switch over?" He said, "Look at it this way: If I was on a road and a road forked, I got a dead man on one side and a live man on the other. Who am I going to ask which way to go?" He said, "Not the dead. I'm going to ask the one that's alive." Let me tell you, he's alive and well today. And he's asking you, if you love me, feed my sheep. Yeah, Take it for what it, what it is. And it says, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed them, neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and unbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said, go to, he said unto them, Go ye all into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. And that's what, and you know what? He said that 2,000 years ago, and he's saying it today. And if there's anything you can take from this lesson, is that he did it for you. And you say, well, you know, you've got to make it personal. Right. This ain't this ain't a congregation. We're talking about you. Because I'm not going to stand with you in judgment day. The pastor ain't going to stand with you. Your mom and daddy ain't going to stand up for you and say, oh, she's a good girl and good boy. It ain't going to be none of that. You will stand before Almighty God on your own, and he's going to ask you. Or Jesus is going to tell God, that's one of mine. The blood that I shed is covering him or her. Yeah. But you ask yourself, do you love him? And if you do, go feed his sheep. Right. Right.